We on? Okay. Shalom, brothers. Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Bashim, Rakak Kodash. We want to give double honors to our apostles and elders of great millstone and Ruel. Peace and salutations and many many blessings to you, elect Akiam, across the four winds of this earth, kicking this word in sincerity and in truth. And also want to say Shalom to the brothers, to the believers that are out there that believe in the testimony that we've been commanded to come out here and testify about. And they might aid the prophets in different ways, form of fashion. Certain brothers, um, you know, might might give water. Certain brothers might get insight on certain things, bring certain points up. At the end of the day, for those believers that are out there aiding the men of the Lord, it's not going unnoticed. And also want to say shalom to the few sincere sisters that are out there. We understand this few and many, but the Lord didn't put a bugged out spirit on every single last one of these women, man. Right. All right. There's a there's a few uh, a few needles in the hundred a hundred haystacks <laughs> out here, man. All right, we out here another weekend, another uh, Friday, warming up the block before the main camp gets out here, man. All right, and um, just was uh, meditating on a few things today, man, going into how Esau has really done a number to the planet Earth. All right, Esau, when we say Esau, we mean the so-called white man. All right, he's done a number to the planet Earth. Now, you got certain of them that'll be like, well, I have nothing to do with that. I ain't done nothing today. You know, you might not have had nothing to do with it personally, all right, but your nation of people, all right, your leaders, your nobles have been doing this to the earth. That's right. All right, and the thing about it is, just as we had to pay for the things that our forefathers had done, all right, y'all got to pay for the same thing that y'all forefathers have done. Because not only do you speak against the things your fathers are doing, all right, but put it like this, you still uphold the traditions that your forefathers had sown on the planet earth. And everything that has been sown on the planet Earth that y'all have sown, your nation have sown, you have to reap it, man. Just like we had to reap what our forefathers had done, you've got to reap what your forefathers had done. And even these low-level Edomites that are out here that'll be like, I ain't did nothing, I ain't did this, that, and the third, you still have a lot of uh, disdain in your heart for the nation of Israel, man. All right, and again, you might have certain ones that'll come up there and be real quick to give you a handshake, pat you on the back. Those be the main ones that want to come up against you, man. Speak things, especially when they're when they're amongst their friends, when they're by themselves. Best believe they talk all types of stuff behind your backs. But at the end of the day, man, that just goes to show you in Ezekiel 35 that this devil has perpetual hatred for you. And not even a hatred for you, but he also has a hatred toward himself and towards the planet Earth that he lives on. Man. Right. All right. And you see what's going on in the Amazon rainforest right now. Ain't nobody really talking about that neither. All right, the Amazon rainforest is being completely destitute right now, man. And for the ones that might not know what the Amazon rainforest is or its significance it plays on the planet Earth, they call the Amazon rainforest the lungs of the planet Earth, man. Yep. All right. Over 25% of the Earth's oxygen is distributed from the Amazon rainforest. The Amazon rainforest so holds so much oxygen that they're the largest river is actually located over there, and that is a river that actually floats in the air, man. People might not have knew that, all right? But the more oxygen, the more trees are destroyed, the more oxygen is taken away, you know? That's gonna cause the earth to die, that's gonna cause the water to cease, moisture to cease. And it just goes to show you that we're in the last days under this devil that's ruling the planet Earth. That's right. And as we're doing research on it, man, the reason why these fires are happening, which we understand first and foremost, it comes from the Heavenly Father, all right? But also, too, what he's doing is he's using Esau to free the fracking, the deforestation that he's doing. All right, and a lot of times they burn certain parts of the rainforest to build certain things, man. All right, well now it's a trickle effect of what you burn and more of it's being burned than what you want it for, man, than what you want it. Which goes to show you this is the devil. This is the man that destroys the earth, man. All right, so I'm gonna start this off in the book of Isaiah, chapter 20, uh, chapter 24, and I'm gonna start at verse, uh, I'm gonna start at verse three. It says, the land shall be utterly empty and utterly spoiled, for the Lord hath spoken this word. And we understand when the Lord speaks these words, they ain't going to return unto him null and void, but they're going to execute. All right, as the scriptures say, as the rain cometh down and as the snow falls the earth, all right, therefore shall the word of the Lord come and shall not return unto him void. That's right. All right, so since he spoke these things, it has to come to pass. And best believe we're seeing these things come to pass, man. All right. Not only is it, are we going into the nukes that's going to hit America real soon. All right. But the Lord is going to destroy the earth via plagues, 
via famine. And he's already visited certain regions of the earth first, man. And certain areas of the earth that he's visited first before he touches America is Jake. All right? Mind you, over there in Brazil, it's, a lot, it's those Jakes that are over there, man. All right? But the ones that are pulling those strings to make those things happen ain't Jakes. Best believe, man, not all Brazilians are Israelites. Remember, Esau went to those lands too. Right. All right? Even Brazil's president looks like an Edomite. All right? But a lot of them are pulling those strings to make these things take place, man. And they're us all being ordained and set up by the Heavenly Father anyway, man. All right? When people make certain moves of destroying the earth, when people make certain moves of um, taking the northern kingdom and putting them in concentration camps, man, best believe that they're doing it. But these are all things that are set up by the Heavenly Father. And he sends angels on the planet earth to put the mind state on certain people to make certain judgments and certain decisions. That's why it's written in Isaiah, the 45th chapter. It's written that, um, uh, loosely paraphrasing, pretty much, um, shall there be good and evil. It goes into how the Lord does good and evil when he does all these things. All right? And it's also read in the book of Amos. It says, shall there not evil be done in the city and the Lord have not done it? All right? So we understand that the Heavenly Father, who the world ignorantly calls God, is the master chess player. And he's pulling all these strings, he's making all these moves that are happening on the planet Earth. And a lot of people go around saying God doesn't do this. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And Shalom to you brothers on the comment board. All right, Shalom to you brothers and you sisters on the comment board, man. You know, whatever precepts y'all got posted, hey, brother, Bobby, sorry, if there's some good ones huh. on there, read it out. Huh. You know, read it out, man. We don't got a band like usually, so, you know, like we gotta, we gotta make do with the beautiful resources that we have, you know? But the Heavenly Father had pulled those strings to be able to do that, man. All right? This is Isaiah chapter 24, verse 4. The earth mourneth and fadeth away. The world languisheth and fadeth away. The haughty people of the earth do languish. All right? So who are the ones that are causing the earth to languish? The haughty of the planet earth. All right? When you go into haughty, that's another form of saying like pride or lofty. All right? Proud. And who are the proudest people on the planet Earth right now, man? Esau, the so-called white man. If you want to call a spade a spade, all right? How do we prove that? Let's get this in Obadiah. One sec, brother. This is the book of Obadiah, the first chapter, which is only one chapter anyway, but it's verse 3. All right, matter of fact, um, I want to start at verse 1 just so we can get it set up who Obadiah is talking about, man. And a lot of people think, man, not, not, and of course, brothers in the know don't think this, but there are certain so-called biblical scholars, they claim to be biblical scholars. They call Obadiah an Edomite, man. But he was a servant of the Most High, and he's prophesying against Edom, man. That's right. There ain't never been no prophet of the Heavenly Father that have been of another nation. All the prophets of the Lord are Israelites, were and are Israelites, and only going to be Israelites, man. That's right. So Obadiah, best believe he wasn't no Edomite, man. He was an Israelite. All right? This is Obadiah chapter 1, verse 1. It says, The vision of Obadiah saith Yahweh of the Lord Yahweh concerning Edom. We have heard a rumor from Yahweh, and an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise and let us rise up against her in battle. For I have made thee small among the heathen that were greatly despised. And he's talking about Esau Edom right here, man. And when you go into this whole chapter, or this whole this whole book pretty much, it goes into Esau Edom. That's right. All right, and when you read the end of it, it goes into the judgment on the end of the earth, what's gonna befall upon Edom. Which goes to show you that this nigga, all right, the so-called white man, the self-proclaimed white man, as we should say, Esau Edom is still on the planet earth today, man. All right. It says, Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen, thou art greatly despised. And why is he greatly despised? When you go all over the earth, when you look at Ishmael, when you look at all these other nations, man, all right, they look, they, they look at America, all right, and the people that rule America, and they look at them as peons, man. All right? People are starting to realize that the so-called white man isn't as this high and mighty savior that he's portrayed himself to be throughout millennia. And he's being found out that he's not what, what he proclaims to be, man. All right? Especially got those nations, those Hamites over there in Africa. They looking at this so-called white man like, man, this man is this man is the devil. 
Right. You remember about a year ago in Southern Africa, those farms and everything that those Edomites had taken, yeah. they're being thrown back out of those lands. That's right. And remember, they were starting to throw that pity party saying, why are they throwing mm -hmm. us from these lands? Because you're greatly despised. All right, because they know that the longer you're in those lands, you're gonna do the same thing that you've done to the land of America, man. Remember, America was an oasis back before the so-called white man came over here. And even when you go into certain parts of America, like California or Florida, or different regions, different rural areas like Mississippi, you can still see the earth yield its fruit. And over there in California, man, you got the palm trees, you got the mountains and the hills all over the place. Just know that America looked like that in some way, form, or fashion before the so-called white man or the self-proclaimed white man that came over here. That's right. Did you have a preset going to bring out? Well, no, nah, I was just going to say that over there in uh, California, they have so much uh, uh, fruit trees. They were, they were, uh, they were real big on um, cultivating the the the, uh, the, uh, the land out there. That's right. Hey, that, that's right, brother. That's right, man. And even again over there in Mississippi. You got, man, when you go through Mississippi, even when you pass through Louisiana, all right, when you ride it down 20, if you're coming from this way, when you ride through 20, you see nothing but trees and vegetation, man. And just know that if, if this devil was to continue to rule, all that stuff would be destroyed, man. Right. I mean, we're living in a day where the Amazon rainforest, the biggest rainforest in the earth, is being shrunken. Due to precept of Deuteronomy that goes to the, the life of the tree is the life of man. And when you go into a few verses, it go, it, it's a law pretty much going into how we're not supposed to destroy certain trees. That's you good. can find that when we pop the shelf, okay. you know? But let's keep going. It says, the pride of thine heart hath deceived thee. Thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high. Because this man has the mind state that he's gonna live on forever. All right, everything that he destroys, he has a way of justifying why he's destroying certain things. Why he subjugated certain people to the ghettos. Why he's put certain people in slavery, man. Why he makes GMOs. All right, this man justifies everything that he does, and he needs to be stopped. All right, you got homeless people that are down here in downtown in certain areas that they go to sleep. You got their paddy wagon or their police putting them in jail, man, because they don't got nowhere to live, and they're sleeping in front of these corners. And they're going to find a way to justify it, man. Them finding a way to justify destroying the Amazon rainforest is the pride of his heart. All right. Was you able to find that, brother? The one, it, it, uh, do, 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 yeah. The 20th chapter? Yeah, 20 and 19. It's in the 20th chapter. Yeah, yeah. Start a few verses prior. About All right, show. time. Uh, you got to get that, man. All right. Because uh, there's certain trees that are here that aren't supposed to be destroyed, man. That's right. Now, there are certain trees that were allowed to destroy for building houses and everything. But Esau, Esau is destroying everything, man. Just to build what we see here today which is a toxic environment. It smells like piss everywhere, pollution all over the place. All right. Create a, a festus, asbestos, I'm sorry. It's being created. All right, this man destroys everything that he touches. Go ahead, I. Uh, this is uh, Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse, uh, I'll start at 18. It says uh, that, that they teach you uh, not to do after all their abominations. With Who are the abominations is talking about, man? It's talking about the heathen. That's right. All right? Is it not written that it says, I have made thee small among the heathen? But it still don't change the fact that these people are the heathen. And this is what they do, man. They don't recognize, they, they don't acknowledge. This is the thing, man. They don't acknowledge the creation of the Heavenly Father. All right? And with this heathen, not acknowledging the creation of the Heavenly Father, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans who follow the heathen's ways have learned and been brought up under the heathen's ways. So whatever the heathen do, that's your mind state because you're heathen now, man. So you don't give a dang about the planet Earth neither. Go ahead, brother. Uh, back in 18, it says that they teach you uh, not to do after all their abominations. And that's why the Lord didn't want to surround them anyway, man. Huh. That's why the Heavenly Father never wanted to surround the heathen nation. Right. A lot of people have the misconception saying we should all join together and coexist among all nations on the earth. But if you believe in God, who you eagerly call God, the Heavenly Father completely opposes that thought process, man. He never wanted us around the heathen. 
It even gave different people certain regions of the planet Earth so they could coexist among their own nations. That's right. right. All right. But you got everybody that want to say we should all just come together and be joyful, man. Why do you think the Earth is in the state it's in right now? Why do you think there's so much chaos and uproar from nation to nation to nation? These different eth uh, ethnicities, man. Right. And people will be like, well, they, you're right, and they need to stop it. Well, guess what? They ain't going to stop, man. Because the Heavenly Father had never wanted us surrounded by you dingy-ass heathen anyway. Because we were going to take on the ideas of the heathen. That's and when right. you look at our so -called, these so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, you are a people that are destroyed for lack of knowledge because you wanted to take on the customs of the heathen. All right? Hey, and when the kingdom of heaven is established on the planet Earth, best believe we ain't going to be around you heathen, man. Now, we are going to have servants and handmaids, all right? But we ain't going to coexist among you heathen. Go ahead, I. Which, which they have done uh, unto their God. So so should ye sin against Yahweh by Shimei Abishai, your power? Uh, verse 19, it says, When thou shalt besiege a city a long time in, in, in making did war. Not, did not order this thing, man. All right? Because the scriptures say in Psalms 50 and 16, What hast thou done to declare thy statutes, man? And he's talking to the wicked one. He's talking to Esau. All right? And the reason why it says that is because when this devil had taken this land over, he so-called wanted to at least establish it based off biblical principles. All right? When he had taken these lands, remember, when he subjugated the natives that lived over here, all right, he tried to use certain parts of the Bible to justify the reasons and the actions on why he destroyed certain people that are out here, man. Which we know that the Bible's not for him anyway. But this is a man that wanted to live off biblical standards and fail miserably, man. All right? So this has to apply to you now, Esau. Since you wanted to apply the Bible to the way you conquered these different Israelite nations that are over here on this side of America, now you got to be judged within the way that the Bible says you have to be judged. That's right. Because you wanted to declare the Heavenly Father's statues when you were set up this place. That's right. Or I should say, not set up this place, when you were destroyed this place. All right, go ahead. Uh, when thou shalt besiege a city a, a long time in making war against it to to take it, thou shalt not destroy the trees. Thou shalt not destroy the trees. Thereof. And why, man? Trees hold multiple benefits. Uh, all right. One, they give off they give off oxygen, man. Fine. All right. They intake carbon dioxide and they give off oxygen so you can breathe, man. You look at the ghettos and you see there's a lot of a lot of ghettos where there ain't no trees, man. That's why Jake is in a bug that ass state of mind. All right, when you look at trees, they also bring peace. All right, go ahead, brother. Um, it, it says, uh, and uh, therefore by force and acts against them, for for thou mayest eat of them. That's another reason why, man. They bear fruit. They bear apples. They bear lemons. They bear oranges pineapples all right there's a bunch of fruit that gets bored from trees go ahead brother you got a point well uh you, you can you can eat the actual byproduct of of the tree which is the fruit but also you can you can eat parts of the tree itself right, and brother. drink the water you from make, the tree that's right brother you can make tinctures out of certain bark done which are good for ailments man go ahead uh. um it says for for thou mayest eat of them and thou shalt not cut them down uh for the tree of of the field uh -huh. is is man the life the field is the life of man yeah. and it doesn't necessarily mean that it were trees now spiritually we do represent trees but what that's going into man life spring forth from the tree and a lot of our living that we do right now is aided because of the trees man you even have different resins different different sets that are in the trees that bring forth life all right you can make certain teas out of the sap you can burn incense remember frankincense myrrh all these different incense that the Heavenly Father's desired, that, that he desires, as burnt comes from the tree, man. A lot of those beautiful smells come from the trees, and they help with your, they help with anxiety. Come. With a bunch of things, man. But you Cedar. got this devil, all right, this destroyer, Esau Edom, all right, the so-called white man, who's really red. That's right. Destroying everything on the planet Earth. And he has to be stopped. Because the Heavenly Father clearly said, that shall not destroy the trees of the field, for the tree is the life of man. But you got this devil destroying the whole earth. 
That's why it says in Isaiah the 14th chapter, even the fir tree shall rejoice. All right? Because those fir trees that get cut down, man, a lot of those fir trees were used for, for ancient Babylonian ceremonies that they call Christmas today, man. That's right. Those trees that are cut down, those fir trees, those ain't supposed to be cut down. Now, again, certain ones you're able to cut because they have benefits on building houses, and this, that, and the third, but they're cutting all these trees down to help promote their witchcraft and their sorcery, man. Those fir trees, those pine trees that that are that, that the Heavenly Father made produces different saps Done. that helps you, man, Done. that aids you in multiple infirmities. But you got this devil destroying it all, all right? And that goes to show you this man is the devil that the Bible speaks of, man. And you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans are the Israelites the Bible speak of. That's right. You wake up, the Heavenly Father is getting ready to destroy this place. And he's going to destroy you along with it if you don't repent. All right? That's all I wanted on that. Well, there's a little bit more. Okay, okay. Gone. To employ them in the siege. And this, again, when you siege a city. All right? America is a place that was sieged by the so-called white man. That's right. And as he had sieged this place, as he had taken this place from the natives, from these jakes that was already here, he destroyed it, man. Everything that the Lord told him not to touch because it brings forth the beauty and helps aid within life, this man has destroyed it. And since he's been here, the earth doesn't yield her fruit, which goes to the curse of Cain, which we're going to get here shortly as well. But I want to jump back to this in Isaiah, the 24th chapter. There's more to it. Isaiah 24 and 5. It says the earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinances, broken the everlasting covenant. And what's one of the laws that they changed? They destroyed the, they destroyed the life. The land Sabbath. The land Sabbath, man. Yeah. What are you supposed to do? Supposed Every seventh to... year, you're not supposed to pull up any type of vegetation, man, because it's the land Sabbath. Every seventh year, you're supposed to let the earth rest. All right, through those six years, you can pluck up, do what you need to do. And in that sixth year, you pluck up an abundance of what you need because you know that in the seventh year, the earth has to rest. Yeah. And this devil's not even allowing the earth to rest. He don't, ain't no last Sabbath over here, man. All right. And by the way, too, that's supposed to be, when you read about the land Sabbath, that also goes into what's called the release. All right. When you go into the release, that's supposed to be when everybody is released from all the debt that they have. Man. Woo! And that's where you get, you know what I'm saying, with credit, with credit cards, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It's supposed to be a period after seven years where you're supposed to be forgiven. But this devil doesn't do that, man. He keeps going and going and going. He doesn't do that at all. He keeps taking from the earth and destroying it. Why do you think the rainforest is being depleted right now, man? Why do you think the earth is crying out? The earth is crying out, letting, the, letting everybody know it needs new management, that's man. That's right. You devils have done too much to the planet earth. You treat the planet earth like it's just this rock and you can do anything that you want to it man earth alive. the earth is a living organism man the earth is a living organism and you're destroying them you have to go why do you think the animals know man the, and the animals know who we are man the earth knows who we are hey that's why it's written the earth hey the earth helped the women man all right, the earth helped the woman and aided us when we had fled out of when we had fled out of our land in 70 AD. And best believe as it aided us back then, it's gonna aid us right now in a more macroscopic scale. All right. The earth knows it needs new management, and it knows that we are we are the rightful heirs under the Heavenly Father to manage it, man. The earth knows, the animals know. It even says, matter of fact, I'm gonna get this in Romans the eighth chapter, man. Because it's not the earth, the creature, man. Son, I mean, it is. It's not the oil, the the uh, the uh, the blood. I mean, because through, through 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 the spirit and power you have by Shimei Shai, he created everything. He created everything to 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 live thereby. You know, so like it. No, you good, brother. brother. This is Romans chapter eight, verse twenty-two. It says, "For we know that the whole creation groaneth." and travailing in pain together until now. So not only is that talking about us and the animals, but that's talking about the earth as well. Why is that? Because we understand that the earth is being destroyed. We just read it in the book of Isaiah, the 24th chapter. The planet Earth is being destroyed right now, man. So the earth is crying out. 
And again, in Isaiah the 14th chapter, it says the fir, tree, the fir trees shall rejoice in that day, man. Because it ain't going to be no just pillaging, pillaging, pillaging the earth, destroying it. Meaningless, man. All right. Let's keep going. It says, and not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the spirit. And what is the first fruits of the spirit, man? That's the word. All right. The word is the first fruit, man. All right. That's why Paul, Paul speaks on in Hebrews. When we make our utterance known. It's, it's known as the fruit of our lips. All right. We have the first fruits of the spirit, man, which is the Holy Spirit. All right. And having the Holy Spirit, you're going to understand why the earth is destroyed. And you're going to speak against the devil that's doing it. That's right. It says, and not only they, but ourselves, which also have the first fruit of the Spirit, even we ourselves growing with ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of the body, man. And that's what we're waiting for, man. Because these bodies we have right now under this under this wicked system is through, man. We're susceptible to different diseases, different ailments. Because what you do to the earth, what you do to the food, these devils put GMOs in the food. And nobody's complaining about it. This is giving you cancer. This is killing you. It's killing your children. It's killing your fathers. It's killing your mothers. And it's mainly affecting you, Jakes. That's man. right. You got this whole uproar on Popeye's chicken, man. This dang Popeye's chicken what sandwich ordeal, man. Got all you niggas, all you bugged out niggas fighting in the dang store because of these sandwiches that they're putting GMOs in the meat, man. That's right. You niggas is bugged out, man. You need to be put down. You're creating to you. You're helping aid the chaos that Esau is perpetuating on the planet Earth. And the righteous is going to be groaning from these things, man. Ain't none of y'all pissed off right now on the things that are taking place on the Earth? Ain't none of y'all pissed off on what you see that you people are doing, man? Ain't none of y'all pissed off right now? And this is to you. This is to you Israelites, man. I ain't talking to you either. You see you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Ain't none of y'all pissed off right now, man. You just walking around in your lost la-la land state of mind, man. That state of hypnosis that you've been placed in, man. And you follow the idiot box, the TV, rip, real, real, what is it called? Basketball Wives of Atlanta, Los Angeles, all that shit. All that bullshit, man, which is scripted. All that folly. Our people are, our people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, man. Just as our forefather, our father Hosea had spoken, when you read about it in Hosea, the fourth chapter, man. You so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans are destroyed people, man, for lack of knowledge. You don't want to acknowledge that the Heavenly Father is your power, and when you do, you don't still recognize him within your actions That's or within right. your walk. That's right you want to serve this devil, man. But if you want to serve this devil, you got to go with this devil. And that's just the truth of the whole matter, man. We're the only ones that are able to rise up against the evildoers. And it's written so. Hey, it's a one-third and a two-third for a reason. It's right. And there's 144 out of that one-third that were willing to stand up and prophesy against the wicked mm. one, man. And through the word of prophecy, we were able to overcome the wicked one and what he's done. All right. Matter of fact, I want to get that in um, 1 John, the second chapter. This is 1 John chapter 2, verse 14. Well, I'm going to start at verse 12. It says, I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. And this little children he's talking about is talking about the elect. All right, a lot of people are under the misconception that that's talking about the whole world. No, man, there were always a set of people that the Heavenly Father had set up and pulled to himself that were created to be forgiven as they had sinned on the planet Earth. All right? Grace is given unto us. That's why it says in Ephesians, the second chapter, by grace you are saved. In this period of time, people get grace misunderstood too, man, because they look at grace and feel like that's a that gives them leeway to do all the BS that they got to do, man. All right? Grace is the period of time that we're under. The, the, hey, the elect, Lord, will be those men. Grace is the period of time that the elect are under all right. Hey, hey, you're getting too close, bro. You don't got to get that close. All right. But anyway, going into a grace is a period of time where the Heavenly Father had set us here to get right before he destroys this place. That's right. 
that's grace. Like when you got a grace period in school, let's say you take a test and you might be absent that day to take the test. The teacher gives you a grace period and say, you got X, you got till this day to finish this test. Well, the heavenly father had given this grace period here before he destroys this place, man. And throughout this grace period, those that he had set up as chosen, his elect are gonna be getting right and making their, making their services known, presenting the bodies as a living sacrifice unto the heavenly father. All right, that's gonna be enough to cover their sins. Man. That's right. Because this is a form of sacrifice that we're doing, man. Remember, when sacrifice was offered back in the ancient world, they did that to repent unto the Lord and to give thanksgiving unto the Heavenly Father for the things that he had placed on the earth. All right? And we're doing this in like fashion, except for it ain't no goat, no lamb, no bullock, no ox. But we make ourselves that sacrifice, as Paul stated. That's right. All right? And with us making our sacrifice, that's what makes our sins cleansed, as we read in 1 John, the second chapter. All right? This is 1 John chapter 2. This is 1 John chapter 2, verse um, where I left off at in verse 13. It says, I write unto you fathers because ye have known him that is from the beginning. And we are those fathers, man. All right, if we're the first spirits created on the planet Earth, hey, you read, you read in Romans the eighth chapter that we have the first fruit of the spirit. If we are those first fruits, that makes us the fathers because we were the first ones created from the beginning after Yahweh shine, man. And we also are the ancient prophets from before. All right, so he says, I write unto you fathers, which is before he called them little children in verse 12. All right, which shows you that we are the men that were set up from the foundations of the earth to be doing this work. All right. It says, I write unto you fathers because ye have known him that is from the beginning. And we do, man. We know him that's from the beginning. All right, which is Yahweh, which predates the beginning and the end, which is the ancient of days. And we also have a relationship with Yahweh Shai, who was the Alpha, the beginning, and the Omega, the end. And we had that relationship with him from the beginning, man. That's why we were moved through the Spirit to come out here and do this work. That's right. All right? And we, we had the testicular fortitude to be able to stand in the devil's den and speak against this devil, Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, to his face. All right? Because somebody has to call this devil out for the things that he's done to the planet Earth. Somebody has to call him out for the slavery that he's put the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans under for these 400 plus years. Somebody has to be able to rise up against the evildoers. All right, and John's gonna speak on this too once we keep reading. It says, verse 13, I write unto you fathers because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you young men because ye have overcome the wicked one. Who is the wicked one that we've overcame? Esau, Edom, the so-called white man the devil the Bible speaks of. He's the one that's destroying the earth. He's the one that had put us in slavery 400 plus years. He's the one that helps perpetuate white supremacy on the planet earth. Again, and always, we always say this, you got devils that come out and be like, I didn't do that, that wasn't me. Well, you ain't doing nothing against it right now to stop it, but you're helping aid it. You're helping aid and perpetuate it, man. Because you know that if you, if you were to speak against the atrocities that your forefathers had done, and if you really stood up against it, you would be shunned among your own peers. And the thing about it is, man, with us, the men of the Lord that come out here and prophesy, we don't give a dang about our own peers. We don't give a dang about what our own people got to come up and say, man. It's written in Ezekiel the third, the second and third chapter to make our foreheads hard against their foreheads, man. So if you was really this, this, this soft and this this um this um empathetic guy that's like i agree that's wrong that they've done we'll speak up against it to your peers rise up against the ones that's doing it man and you ain't willing to do it because you want to uplift your white supremacy man but the heavenly father had set us up who the world ignorantly calls god all right and his son yahweh who the world ignorantly calls jesus christ hey man they spirit is upon us to be able to stand up here and make our make our confession and our testimony known and speak against the wicked one that we were destined to overcome. Did it stop again? No, we, we should roll. It's going? Okay. Yeah. Let's keep going. First John chapter two, continuing on, it says, because ye have overcame the wicked one, I write unto you little children, because you have, you have known the Father. And best believe we know the Father, man. How do we know him? We are literally in this book, man. All right? Brothers, man, we supposed to be, hey, man, this is our lifeline. This is our source of comfort, man. This is how we know that the heavenly father knowing the heavenly father gives you a form of comfort that you're not going to receive from anything man 
That's why it considers wisdom, which comes from this book, like it unto a woman, man. Because when you're with the woman that you like, she gives you a very comforting energy. All right, you can lay your head on her breast. You can you can you lay next to her, talk talk about a bunch of things with her. This is what the righteous woman that is. But not even, I'm sorry, not, not even just the righteous woman, man. Once we know, I ain't no righteous woman anyway. Nope. But when you're when you're with the woman, and for the brothers that have women, you know what I'm saying, and in decent relationships and decent states with that woman, they understand that in the flesh, a woman brings forth certain comfort, man. Well, in the spirit, wisdom is likened unto a woman because this word brings you comfort, man. A lot of people equate wisdom with the spirit of a woman. And they'll say, wisdom is a woman, the Holy Spirit is a woman. That's not the case. The reason why the Holy Spirit and the Comforter is likened unto that because just as a woman in the flesh is comforting unto you, that's what the Spirit is and that's what this Word is likened unto, man. All right? You got a precept? Yeah, kind. Go this ahead, is, brother. This is Ecclesiastical going, going, going into how wisdom is likened unto a woman. Uh, uh, this is Ecclesiastical chapter uh, 24, verse 8. It said, it says, so the, the creator of all, to like it. it says, so the uh, creator of all things gave me a commandment, and he that made me caused my tabernacle to, to, to rest and said, let thy dwelling be in Jacob. Uh, and the- and This is talking about wisdom, man. All right, it's just talking about the Holy Spirit, the word, man. It says, let thy dwelling be in Jacob, meaning, meaning the only nation on the planet earth that's meant to have the wisdom of the heavenly father is Jacob, man. All right. That's why it's written in Psalms 147. I give my word unto Jacob, my statue unto Israel. I have not dealt so with no other nation. And also when you read it in the book of Isaiah chapter nine, verse eight, it talks about how the word of the most high is given unto Israel, man. All right. Go ahead, brother. And thine in, in inheritance, in in Israel, uh, verse nine it says, "He created me from the beginning, be, before the world." And this is a direct precept of the Proverbs, the eighth chapter, man. All right. Again, it's talking about the word. All right. It's talking about the word. Go ahead. I shall and and I shall never fail. You know, uh, in in the holy holy tabernacle I serve before Him, and. And so was I established in Zion. That's right, established in Zion, man. And having that wisdom, man, we're gonna jump back to the point too. Right. But no, no, you don't gotta apologize, brother. You didn't do nothing wrong. You know, but um going back to the point, man, with having that wisdom, having this word, you're gonna know how to rule. You're gonna know how to Woo! judge. And that's what the Heavenly Father wanted us to do anyway, man. When you follow his rules that he had set up, the earth is gonna flourish, man. But for those that don't follow his rules, that don't have wisdom, which is who we're talking about anyway, Esau, Edom, we see the earth in the state that it's in right now, man, because they lack wisdom. That's why in Obadiah it says, they're loosely paraphrasing, it says there is no wisdom in thee. You know? And we see that how the earth is how the earth doesn't yield its fruit. What's going on? It doesn't bear, it doesn't bear, it, it's there's no wisdom in this man, man. That's why he rules with a with a, with a pitchfork and an axe. You know? Let's get this in Genesis, the fourth chapter, because as we're going into how this devil's destroying the earth, we got to go back to why he's destroying the earth, all right? Because it ain't just no new thing. This is a perpetual thing that was sown in the earth from around the time of Adam, all right? This is the book of uh, Genesis, chapter four, and uh, let's see here. I'm going to start at verse... Man, I might as well read, read. The, 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 I'm going to start at the whole chapter, man. All right, because we got to get a backdrop on what's really going on, man. All right, and plus two, we ain't got nothing but time. What's um, how much battery I got on there? Uh, thirty-six. I'm 36. trying to turn down the brightness. So we're gonna bring out like two more presets. By the way, brothers, it's not gonna be as long as it usually is. I left my charger at the house by mistake. You know, so uh, the battery's dying pretty quick. So unfortunately, it's not gonna be as long as it usually is. With the water, how about Shimmy? How was He was a lot. He was able to allow us to come out here and bring this word out, man. That's right. All right, in the gates of the nobles. By the way. This is Genesis chapter four, verse one. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man of the Lord. I have gotten a man from Yahweh. And she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of the sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And this is the thing. When you go into the ancient, ancient customs and ancient cultures, it was always the younger son that would till the sheep. 
All right, that was always a job that was given unto the youngest. All right, so when Cain was born, there was probably a period of time where he was still a sheep and doing that as well. All right, and then when Abel was born, that was a lot that was given unto him. Remember, when you go into Jesse and his sons, yep. you had Jesse and his sons, and you had David, who was what? He was a tiller of the sheep. You know what I'm saying? Which is the same thing, man. All right, so let's keep going. It says, and in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought forth fruit of the ground and offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought forth the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And Yahweh had respect unto Abel for his offering, man. Because what did Abel offer? The firstling of his flock. flock. The choice. Okay? When the thing about having a flock, man, all right, it's not an easy thing giving up your firstling. All right, your precious one, especially if it's, if it's without spot or blemish. All right, because out of a horde of sheep, you only have a few that are literally all white and have none of those brown or black spots that are on it. You know, and it takes a lot of work to raise those sheep up. When you go into sheep and raising sheep, not only are you raising the sheep up, but you literally build a relationship with those sheep, man. Yeah. That's why I was so much of a thing in our ancient culture when a sheep, when one of your sheep go missing, it's important that you go and fetch it, man. All right, and this devil, man, Esau Edom, he doesn't have any care toward that, man. He destroys all of that. And what did Cain do? Hey, Abel, got, Abel got a flock, but I'm gonna bring some fruit. He brought up some fruit, man. All fruit. right. And also too, man, I was, man, I was having a conversation with some of my coworkers at work yesterday, man, Edomites, you know, and it's just, I, and just having a conversation. And, you know, I'm talking to them, acting intrigued, and they're going into how they used to have farms. They grew up on their farms at this, that, and the third. Two of them, not one, but two of them said they had burned their pasture. I was like, you burned your pastor? I was like, what are you talking about, your flock? They was like, yeah, man, we were knuckleheads when we young. We burned our pastor. And that goes to literally when the, when the, when the scriptures talk about how you're supposed to treat your beast. Yeah. All right? You're supposed to treat your beast with love, man. But this devil was like, oh, man, I burned our pastor when I was young. <laughs> and in my mind, I'm like, man, this really is the devil. This is Esau, man. You know? But let's get back to the point, man. I just had to bring that out. That happened just yesterday while I was at work. I was amazed, but I wasn't. I, 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 but I wasn't surprised. You know, I was just like, "Wow, this is him." <laughs> but it says, "And in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought forth fruit from the ground and offering unto the Lord. And Abel he had brought the firstling of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and his offering, but unto Cain and unto his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell." He mad because he gave up a whack ass sacrifice unto the Lord, man. That's right. When Abram, when, when Abel, I said Abram actually, actually it's a lot here. When Abel had brought forth the firstling of his flock, all right? It says, but unto Cain in his offering, I'm sorry, let's see here. Verse 6, and the Lord said unto Cain, why art thou wroth? And why is that countenance fallen? If thou do well, shalt thou not be accepted? So he's pretty much saying, if you was to do what you were supposed to do, it would have been accepted. What you mad for when you did what you were supposed to do, man? That's like slapping your mama and being mad at your mama for being mad at you, you know? More so, I say slapping your daddy. The reason why I said mother, because you know how Jake is with their mamas. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It says, if thou do well, shalt thou not be accepted? If thou doest not well, sin lieth at thy door. Ooh. And this is a nation of people. This is a spawn of Cain that does not do well, man. All right, there is no good in this, man. It keeps going out. Now it fell. Oh, okay, okay, <laughs> right. you might as well just hold it. Yeah, it you know? But pretty much this is a nation of people that is literally programmed not to do well. All right, look at the earth for crying out loud, man. If thou do well, thou shalt not be accepted. If thou do not well, sin lieth at thy door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. And Cain talked with Abel his brother. And it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. All right, so this is murder that's taking place on the planet Earth through envy and through strife because of the blessing that the Lord gave Abel. That's right. And not Cain. Because best believe the Lord blessed Abel after that, man. Yeah. Every time you offer up sacrifice, you, you're you offering up sacrifice for repentance, and the Lord blesses you for that, man. Right. In some way, form, or fashion, he blesses you after you, after you um, ask for forgiveness, man. All right? That's why it says as well, sin lie at thy door with Cain. All right, because his sacrifice wasn't heard. All right, his repentance wasn't heard, man. His fruit wasn't fruitful. His fruit was a, <laughs> was, a, was, a, was, a, was a fruit that was whack as hell, man. 
All right, that was fruit to the Lord that wasn't accepted, man. Yeah, because it, it was a, a, of, of the blood of grapes in, instead of, a, of, of the uh, spirit. You know, the, the, the blood, because the life is in the blood. Huh, so, huh, huh. so like it. Good, good. It says um, in verse, uh, where I'm in verse Seven. 9, it says, And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. I am, am I thy brother's keeper? And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood cried unto me from the ground. And now, and this is the point, And now art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. All right? When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shall thou be on the earth. That ain't just back then, man. That's still to the day. That's right. Why do you think the earth isn't in its fullness right now, man? All right, the earth isn't in its fullness because you still have this fugitive and this vagabond running around destroying and still having that evil eye toward his brother. Having that evil eye toward the brother of his bosom. All right? That's this man. He's doing this to the earth. The reason why he's doing this to the earth, all right, because the earth isn't yielding its fruit. Reason why? Because he's destroying the earth. Just as he destroyed Abel. Just as he's destroying Jake, man. Because best believe Cain and Abel ain't nothing but a, a, an ancient, a more ancient form of Jacob and Esau, man. That's the same exact thing. And what's one of the blessings that was given to Esau? Let's read that in Genesis 27. This is Genesis chapter 27, verse 38. It says, and Isaac answered and said unto Esau, Behold, I have made him thy Lord. Let's talk about Jacob, man. All right. Hey, man. <laughs> Jacob was more higher favored than Esau. Just like Abel was more higher, more, 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 um, more, he was highly favored more than um Esau, man. I'm sorry, just like Abel was more, more, more favored to the Lord than Cain. All right. It says, and Isaac answered and said unto Esau, Behold, I have made him thy Lord. And all his brethren have I given to him for servants, and with corn and wine have I sustained him. And what shall I do now unto thee, my son? And Esau said unto his father, Hast thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, and he also. O oh, my father, and Esau looked at his voice and wept. And he wept because, hey man, you didn't get that blessing. You rather had desire in that raw meat that you wanted than to receive the blessing of the Lord. Because you was willing to give up your birthright just for that meat. All right. This is Genesis 27 and 39. And Isaac's father answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and the dew of heaven from above. And by the sword thou shalt live and serve thy brother. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have dominion, thou shalt break the yoke from off of thy neck. All right. So, amen. It says Esau is going to rule with the fatness of the earth. And he was going to he was going to have the fatness of the earth. And he was going to rule with the sword. All right, and he's ruled with the sword, man. All right, and he, he's using his weaponry to destroy the earth and to destroy his brother that he wanted to and that he's done from the beginning with Jacob and with Cain and Abel, man. All right, hey, when you go to the word Cain, all right, that word means dagger. The word Cain means dagger or weapon, man. And that's the spirit of this man right now. What's up, brother? I'm sorry? He thought this was a gun. Hey, man. Jake, bro. Uh. But anyway, you know, going back to the point, boy, man, if Jake would inquire about yeah. that, boy, what we out here doing? Oh, Our man. people are destroyed, man. Like a man. Bro, the reason why he thought that was a gun for the brothers, man, the tripod has a handle grip on it, man. You like, is that a gun? Boy, man. That Jake got their lives, their, their mind states, constantly focused on death rather than life. You know? We blame that on the heathen that we're surrounded by, man. That's right. All right? But anyway, going back to the point, that was one of the blessings that was given to Esau in Genesis 27. He was going to rule with the sword. And with that sword, he's destroyed the earth, man. All right? And within that being the case, he has to be destroyed. He has to go. He's done too much. He's gone too far. And his word is starting with his destruction, and it's going to be made manifest physically when Yahweh Shai has to come back and intervene along with the 144,000 and the angels that come down and destroy your precious America, man. Your red, white, and blue. So let's end this off here in Revelation, the 11th chapter.
This is Revelation chapter 18. I'm sorry, chapter 11, verse 17. It says, saying we give thanks, saying we give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art and was and thou art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and hast reigned. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath has come in the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets. And that's talking about us, man. He's going to give us reward for our labors that we've done. All right? Understanding that we've grown in our spirit, that we've grown daily. It's even written in Daniel 7 and 25, loosely paraphrased, and it says that, um, he, he, hey, man, um, he wearied the saints of the Most High. All right? And when you go into that word weary, that goes into constantly harassed. And there's a period of time, there's a season that we're being constantly harassed by this devil. But best believe through our services that we do, brothers, brothers on the comment board as well, man. You know, that's who, that's who I'm talking to. All right? Your, your works aren't going unnoticed by the Lord. And he's going to give you reward for the things that you're doing right now, for offering up thanks unto him. He's going to reward you to it, man. That's right. Why is that? Because it's written. It's written, and we see it today. Seeing Esau being judged the way he is, seeing the earth in this state, it hurts, it sucks. But as we read in Isaiah 24, the earth is language, it, it is written. All right? So we also, at the same time, as much as we groan, when we see these things, we get rejoiced because we see the word of the Heavenly Father going to pass, coming right. to pass. All right? And it gives us joy knowing that as he's doing these things and he's written, he's also going to reward us, man, because it's written as well. And that's what we have joy in our spirits for, and that's what we give thanks for, man. Knowing that these are written, and our salvation is not. All right? Is it still up? Yeah. All right. Let's keep going. It says, And thou shalt give reward unto thy service, the prophets, and to the saints, and to them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. And that's what I wanted, man. Them that destroy the earth, them that rule the earth, that was given the fatness of the earth, all right, and destroy with the earth are going to be destroyed by the Heavenly Father, man. All right, and those that destroy the earth is the nation of Esau Edom. That's right. The so-called white man, if you want to be um, technical. The self-proclaimed white man, if you want to be technical. And best believe the time is coming where his rule on the planet Earth is getting ready to cease. There ain't going to be no more UN. There ain't going to be no more NATO. All right, there ain't going to be no more EU. It's going to be none of that, man. It's going to be the mountain of Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, man. All right, it's going to be Mount Zion. You got something to end it on? Yeah. Let's end it on this. This is Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 8. It says, because of unrighteous dealings and injuries and, and riches gotten by deceit, the kingdom is translated from one people to another. And when you look at this place right here, man, well, really, when he started the Caribbean, because that's where Esau first came when he went onto this hemisphere, man. He had went to the Caribbean. He had went to where, where, where those Jakes in the Northern Kingdom are, man. And what did he do, man? He killed those Arawaks and those Tainos, those Ephraim, those Ephraimites. And those, hey, hey, you know, even, even um, not even just Ephraim, but all the Northern Kingdom that was over here, man. That's it right. just starts with Ephraim because they're the head of the Northern Kingdom. And he came over here and destroyed them, took all their riches, took all their gold, sent it back over there to Spain and Portugal, namely Portugal, all right? And had taken this land over. And he did the same thing to America when they had came over here. They conquered you Gadites and you Reubenites. All right, conquered y'all, took y'all resources, took y'all riches, and set up this land for himself. That's right. But best believe, man, just as you had set up this land for yourself and had taken it, it's going to be destroyed by all the blood that you shed. And that's a law. All right, Deuteronomy, I'm sorry, Numbers chapter 35, 35. verse 33, or 33 or 35, yeah. one of the two, 30, goes 35. into the judgment of what happens when you when you take a land by, by blood unjustly, man. The only way to cleanse it is by the blood of him that sheds it. And best believe that when the Lord visits this place, hey, when the Heavenly Father touches this place, man, it's going to be a lot of blood. That's right. Because this land was formed off of a lot of blood, man. So by blood it was gotten. By blood it has to go, man. Ezekiel 24. Ezekiel 35. Ezekiel 35 too. You know, Ezekiel 34 too. <laughs> 24. You know? Oh, 24. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ezekiel, hey, hey, yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> You know, so right. hey, no, you good. Right. We gonna end it off on that, you know, but just for uh, battery's sake. Um, Lord willing, it was edifying. Hey, man, brothers, we almost out of here, man. Keep fighting, keep doing the work. Hey, keep offering the sacrifice that we offer, which is the fruit of our lips with thanks, man. That's right. Continue to do that, man, and keep your joy in your Shah. That's right. All right. We want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Bashim, Rakakwadash.
double honors to our apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessings and many salutations to you, Elect Nakyam, across the four winds of this earth, kicking this word of sincerity and the truth. Shalom. Shalom.